So guys, I am back with another Lords of the Fallen video and today guys we go over the patch notes for the latest patch which has just arrived on consoles, I think it was earlier on today or could have been last night maybe for Steam or PC players but today right now we have it on Xbox and the PS5, it's patch version 1.1.222 or on PC I believe it's 1.1.224 How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so let's get into it. Live now on the Xbox Series X and S and PS5. Greetings lamp bearers, we come bearing a rather large patch for consoles. One which addresses stability and performance issues. Man oh man, we definitely need this on the Xbox Series X. I'm not even joking guys, it's pretty bad at the minute as well as gameplay changes from your feedback and suggestions. One hefty change being implemented is the induction of cross-play between consoles, allowing Xbox players to join PlayStation players within Monstead. We will have more information to follow regarding reintroduction of cross-play between consoles and PC, but our plan is to re-enable this on Thursday. More on this below. Okay, so they also state community feedback vestiges in New Game Plus. We hear you. We have decided to roll out some fundamental changes to ensure everyone continues to enjoy New Game Plus experience, including both those who have relished the No Vestige challenge and those who would rather they were still present throughout the world. From today's patch onward, when you complete your initial playthrough, you will be presented with a new option before embarking on your next playthrough. You can either progress directly to the next consecutive new game, i.e. if you've completed new game 1, uh, you would move on to new game plus 2, that makes sense. Or you can replay the current NG at the same difficulty, or be retaining your character items and progression. But resetting the entire world including NPCs and quest lines. This will allow trophy hunters and completionists to seek out any outstanding tasks without having to contend with increased difficulty, should they so choose. A further patch coming this Thursday will see further updates made to the New Game Plus mode. Instead of removing all vestiges, as it does currently, New Game Plus 1 will only see a few disappear, while keeping the key locations intact. In New Game Plus 2, a few more will disappear, and then in New Game Plus 3, all but the main hub, Skyrest Bridge, and Adir's Shine vestige will disappear. This way our initial vision remains intact, but is some of the gradual adaptation awaiting those who seek increasing levels of challenge. Lastly, as a follow up to the popular announcement made during last week's stream, we can confirm we have started designing the New Game Plus modifier system, allowing players to fully customise their New Game Plus experience, whether that's retaining all vestiges, keeping just a few, or removing them completely. It will also include other fun modifiers like hardcore mode, one death equals permadeath, wow, item randomizers, enemy randomizers, etc. This feature set is yet to be fully defined, but our current intention is to release the modifier system before the end of the year. That actually sounds pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so moving on to enemy density. Okay, so today as a means of helping with enemy density, we're improving our leashing system, further limiting how far enemies will pursue players from their spawn point. This helps prevent large crowds of enemies from relentlessly pursuing the player when rushing through a level. We aim to have further refinements in Thursday's patch, including reducing the number of enemies present in areas where players most struggle. These enemies will be removed in your initial playthrough but will remain in New Game Plus in keeping with the more challenging experience players seek. Additionally, we are going to tweak some crowd behaviours so enemies will not swarm players as often. Multiple enemies will no longer land hits at the same time, while enemies will also be a little less aggressive when swarming the player in greater numbers. I mean, I don't mean to be funny here, people. I mean, this is a Souls-like game. It's meant to be really hard. I've got a funny feeling many people have been complaining just how hard this is. And well, now it seems as though they're trying to do something about it. Okay, so moving on to crossplay. As we explained in the Q&A stream, we are targeting to deploy this ASAP for all platforms, but we want to ensure certain GPU stability levels for PC players before this happens. We are pleased to confirm we are activating crossplay on consoles this coming Monday, with a plan to activate it on all platforms this coming 
Thursday. Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 Mob Density We've activated a leashing system in which enemies will stop following you after X meters. Case by case scenario to avoid crowds of enemies on you if you happen to rush away section of the map. New Game Plus Added a new option for New Game Plus which resets the game world, allows to restart with current character in the same world. Crossplay Crossplay has been enabled between consoles and PC players will join as soon as it's stabilised. 3D photo mode Sometimes the camera of a saved 3D scene in 3D photo mode was in the wrong position. Added fail safe for this to not happen. Uh, fixed door state open closed and other interruptibles not being saved in the 3D photo. AI Fixed enemies that could sometimes be spawned in a T-pose at the lower part of the manse, tweaking the nav mesh on a small section of lower Calref to help AI navigate better in that complex environment setup. Trappers traps can now uh, be destroyed with ranged options such as arrows, grenades, magic and more. Ruiners uh, now have a higher chance of triggering their fearful charge. Ruiners now aim their shield fire attack at players more accurately. Beware. Parasites now follow their hosts more quickly to prevent them from straying too far when the player pulls the host far away. If they are blocked, they will teleport to the host to aid players who are siphoning them by staying close. We found an issue where pilgrims perch pilgrims could sometimes shoot through certain structures. This issue has now been fixed. Cross Bowman have now undergone additional adjustments to their behaviour in order to make them smarter without increasing their difficulty. This should result in a more engaging and balanced gameplay experience when encountering these enemies in the game. A nav mesh in the system has been adjusted to assist the, an invisible archer in targeting the player more efficiently. The aggro range of the Deep Sparrow, Inferno Enchantress and Mendes' Visage have been revised to prevent them from pursuing players after losing sight. The Abess and the Conflagrantia will now refrain from using their abilities against the player if the player is not in plain sight. The Worms spawned by the Mendes' Visage can now be dodged more easily. There was one instance of a Pilgrim at Pilgrim's Perch who could see the player from very far distance, now who only notice the player when they get closer. A fix has been implemented for archers to keep their arrow in place while applying vertical offset. This is a visual fix for archers that when aiming at you from slopes, the arrow was being incorrectly displaced. The most visible impact uh, was on the holy archer, particularly in the woman's area section. An update has been made to the look at behaviour for NPCs to prevent neck snapping when a player gets close to them. This improvement aims to create a smoother and more natural interaction between the player and NPCs. Ok so audio, we've added a new slightly sexier sound when pressing continue in the main menu. The exclusive section of the collector's edition now has a specific song. Ok balancing, flame funnel spell from the remembrance store has seen its price adjusted. Fixing buyable items in the shrines missing skipping inventory ball being set to true. Adjusting social shrine goals based on progression and forecast. Temporary change at the Umbral Shrine to sell 999 Umbral Scourings instead of 1 while we wait for a proper infinite implementation. Balancing pass on New Game Plus for bosses and regions almost end game New Game Plus. The curve was too steep. Malhu decided to lower the price of the seeds in his store from 2500 Vyga to 1200 Vyga. The parry guard protection has been increased to 80% as announced in today's stream with Frightening Cowboy. He also avoids receiving any elemental damage or ailment onto boss. Parasites in Crimson Vector now do not trigger a heavy reaction in the player. We observed an instance where Reinhold's stab attack was propelling the player in a random direction. This issue is now being fixed. Nessius Visage will now react correctly with the camera if the player is positioned between the boss and the camera. Collisions Collisions on some umbral platforms in the system have been fixed to improve the navigation of certain enemies. On the 5th, during our gardening day we improved trees that needed better collision detection. 
we've covered a ground hole in Pilgrim's Perch that was causing players to fall through it. It wasn't visible enough and felt unfair. We've fixed the collision of a small wood platform in Lower Calrath that was causing bringers of stillness to fall through instead of lurking from the shadows. Changed Evasion Area Gameplay Sublayer to match the surrounding art sublayer. This fixes the invader spawning under the ground at the start of the invasion. Fixed chase farming spot in which you would fall off the world on his own for every spawn. Now if you go have a coffee uh, and leave your character to farm on his own, you may find your character dead when coming back. I mean I'm not going to lie guys, I can't pronounce things on the best of days but whoever wrote this has had a shocker here, I'm not going to lie. Jesus man, it seems someone can't put a single sentence together. I legit thought my eyes were going funny but I've looked back and read through some of this. Man oh man, but let's just try and get through it anyway. Now players may get an out of boundaries and fall out of the world in the bay of the Hallowed Sisters. Fixed small collision bump that could lead AIs to get stuck near Agatha's Vestige. Fixed missing umbral nav mesh in the CSC main east. Uh, fixed a small ground. The collisions of the two umbral walls in Lower Calroth have been reviewed and updated. Various ramps and staircases that didn't offer smooth navigation have been improved. Two ground tiles that were causing issues with Delph's attacks preventing her from reaching the player have been fixed. Collision issues in the deep forest have been addressed to prevent enemies from getting stuck in certain situations. Collisions in Upper Calgraph have been adjusted to provide smoother player navigation and eliminate small steps. Collisions in Lower Calgraph's alehouse have been improved to better support jumping gameplay and prevent players from falling off on the other side. Multiple collision fixes in Lower Calgraph have been implemented to ensure the AI's navigation mesh functions correctly. A rock that previously lacked collisions is now proper ones. Two locations in the Forsaken Fen have been tweaked to prevent creatures from getting stuck under certain combat conditions. Players can clip through the floor at a specific spot in the refractory of the manse. Improved navigation of drones in a secret room within Bami's castle. Added an additional collision box for AIs to prevent them from falling through the hole at the Tower of Penance. Players can still push them through. Fix a collision issue in Lower Calroth that could prevent players from stepping on it without using a jump. Collision fixes and optimization in the area around Lower Calroth's orphanage have been implemented. Correctly hidden landscape collision on Mance Supply Road to prevent thrown objects from getting stuck. Players were not dying properly due to the void volume being too low on Pilgrim's Perch. A collision issue between a rock and a wooden structure has been fixed to prevent players from getting stuck under certain conditions. A wrong collision setup that made it difficult to pick up an item in Lower Calvary's smelter area has been fixed. A collision bug that occurred on a specific bed at Bremer's Castle has been fixed. Players could get stuck on a collision in the sunless screen. Fixed a hole at Fitzroy's Gorge that could cause players to fall through it. Fixed a collision on an asset that could cause players to get stuck when rolling in a certain way. A misplaced collision could cause players to fall through the ground in the tutorial area. On to customization. I mean, there's a lot of collision problems in this game, it seems. Okay, so yes, under customization. Removed rootbone influence from the stalker's hunter body and legs to improve the visuals. The Holy Archer character model has been adjusted. These changes include removing the belt from torso, uh, shortening the cloth on the head, and modifying CLPs to accommodate these alterations. Swelling on the skirt part of the marksman armor has been removed to improve visuals and physics. Okay, so onto gameplay. Fix soul flare attack to prevent falling from a ledge when taking a step back just after it. Fix wrong orientation of the player while interacting with NPCs and trying to move around. Updated uh, retrieve Viger animation to be faster, interruptible more quickly and added iframes until retrieving the Viger. Fixed wrong behaviour of the player while interacting with NPCs and vendor screens which could lead to weird pauses. Modified vestige interactions to allow camera movement while interacting with the vestige. In some instances when using a lamp to traverse certain platforms in Axiom, falling would trigger the fall animation twice. Now it only triggers once as intended. Fixed controller vibration and camera shake from some level elements that ignored if the player turned that option off in the menu. Okay, so onto level design. 
a puzzle involving umbral platforms at the Imperium could be exploited by using Soulfly on one of the platforms from a specific angle. A streaming volume has been adjusted in Pilgrim's Perch to ensure that some assets don't appear too late for the player. Revise the obstacles in one of the shortcuts to no longer force the player to go through the umbral fully. Now it can be crossed by simply raising the lamp. Slightly adjusted the backstab tutorial to prevent the enemy from sometimes going through the fence. Fix an issue where players could interact with a soulflake chain from the ground in Skyrest Bridge. Bypassing one step of the puzzle. An invasion area at Pilgrim's Perch could be easily abandoned with a single jump. To address this exploit, we've added an additional moth wall. Fixed an issue where players could interact with the soulflake chain from the ground in the swamp area. This fix prevents players from bypassing one step of the puzzle. Lock on target has been re-enabled for ambush enemies in the following areas. Forsaken Fen, Fitzroy's Gorge, Curse Fire, Red Scope, Sunless Skin, and Mance of the Hallowed Sentinels. Okay, so on to multiplayer. Revise multiplayer timings and pings to prioritize good connection between players instead of connecting fast with higher pings. Deactivating the Orion Protector feature so we can bring it back with a more interesting loop in it. Orion Protector was entering a player being invaded to help out on the fight. I'm not sure what that means. They go on to state what's confusing to players and reported as a bug, so we're redesigning it. Fix an issue where the audio from the host could sometimes not be heard by the client when in spectator mode after dying. Fix an issue in which the client could lose the ability to move under certain conditions. We've detected an issue in which clients leveling up in vestiges could lose their progress under certain conditions. Okay, so NPCs. Sparky got some additional lines of dialogue. And that's it for NPCs, people. Optimization. The 4,000 books on the shelves at Bremer's Castle now lack collision to reduce memory usage. It was garden day on the Faith and several trees have been optimised. Certain UI textures have been optimised to load more quickly and reduce their VRAM usage. Revise some global textures to reduce memory usage without any apparent loss in visual quality. Collisions within a secret area at Brahma's castle with a group of enemy drones has been optimised and adjusted. We have heavily optimised the game thread for calculating navmesh. Adhering to a maximum processing time budget. Umbral eggs have been optimized to check for player position only after they've been opened. Collision optimizations in the lower Calrath storehouse surroundings. Several additional collision optimizations have been implemented to free up memory and improve the game's performance. The nav mesh have been optimized further to avoid potential hiccups and micro stutters. We've started a rework on how animations of complex enemies are calculated to gain additional performance without compromising quality. Skyrest has undergone further optimization of its walls to improve performance. Runa's totems have been optimized. Parasites have received an additional optimization pass. Improvements have been made to shadow cost and overdraw in the Skyrest bridge area. A slight animation budget optimization has been implemented to ensure that hidden enemies do not blink. Why would they blink? Instead, they will keep their eyes wide open, waiting for the player to appear, allowing for a more effective ambush. And on to performance guys. Adjusted Soulflay texture sizes and materials to be easier to handle by GPUs. Rework some UI elements to free some memory. Reduce environment uh, interaction memory allocation to free memory. Archer anchors are now loaded when interacting with vestiges. Uh, fix several textures used everywhere to reduce video memory. Okay, so on to quests. In one of the character's quests, there was a big door that would disappear. Now, when it disappears, it does so with style. So we have added moth particle systems to the disappearance. Stability. Fix crashes that could happen when interacting with an NPC character and somehow the NPC character actor is not ready. Fix the crash that could happen when opening the inventory and an item is removed from it uh, when filtering the categories. DC items no longer exist in a player's inventory. Fix crash when trying to set a description of an item that no longer exists. Fix the crash that can happen when soul flaying certain entities. 
fix for crash not clearing a C++ timer for the fog gates, fix for crash when trying to know which ammo slot we have selected while not having a valid inventory component, added a check to make sure we have a player pawn on the client before trying to disable interactions, fix a rare, very rare crash that could happen when picking up and the item might be gone while playing the montage, make sure the payload in the trigger event is correct and end the ability otherwise. I mean, half of these don't even make sense to me here, I, mean, I don't know what they're trying to say, it's kind of embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. Okay, fixed crash that could happen when an NPC was talking under specific conditions. Fixed a rare crash that could happen when enemies were targeting players for their abilities. Fixed a rare crash that could happen with some particles that left a trail behind them. Fixed a rare crash that could happen when running out of ammo and trying to do an action that consumes ammo. Fixed a rare crash related to players spawning in multiplayer by the host when the client is still not uh, fully ready. Fixed a rare crash that could happen when resurrecting in an anchor. Fixed a potential crash when being invaded by a player that disconnects at the right frame. Fixed a crash that could occur when the soul flayed character is destroyed while the player has not yet finished the soul flay pool animation. Fixed a crash that could occur when the game thread timed out waiting for render thread after 120 seconds. A failsafe has been added to prevent an across violation crash in DirectX. The suspicion is that the RHI texture is deleted before that code there, whatever that is, returns. A sneaky bug has been fixed where lower supported AMD cards could crash when using 32-bit wave operations in shaders instead of 64-bit. We are now calling terminate on GPU crash when a GPU has been actually crashed not when it's unresponsive to get better information on sentry in case of crashing. Fix an issue where the wrong descriptor was passed to the constructor, resulting in a search when getting resource allocation info from shared buffers. Fix the crash that could occur when an actor in the process of being soulflayed was destroyed before the player could finish the pool animation. Fixed a very rare crash that occurred when continuously hitting walls. Occasionally, the wall would take revenge and crash your game. Fixed a crash that could happen when interacting with the vestige under very specific conditions. We fixed a crash that could occur when enemy AIs use their abilities in specific conditions. Fixed a potential GPU crash caused by the initial cinematic resizing the viewport. Now it fades to black until resolve the ratio change in engine hiccups on some GPUs. Ok so on to UI, fix the skip cinematic button not appearing when any key is pressed. Modified max length for online session passwords to 8 characters, we see some people online usually go for between 6 and 4, long character words. Splash screen has now some additional sounds. Now if you equip an ammo or spell that cannot be used, we show the X also in the widget. Fixed a bug in which the character name pop up could not be closed with a gamepad in spamming A or B while opening. We reverted the NE button shows A to skip in cinematics as we saw that some devices weren't working well. We'll come back tomorrow. Fixed a display issue for stackable items sold in vendors where it could show a higher number than the actual available purchasable amount after going through an anchor once. Improved navigation on faction shrines with a gamepad so you don't have to go all the way down to move from tier to tier. Increased the password limit for multiplayer to 8 characters. Removed a prompt warning of the presence of an umbral path from a boss arena and it now only appears after the fight is over. Interact prompts sometimes were not displaying correct key binding depending on the chosen key. Ok so on to VF. X. Adjusted banners FX angle that could sometimes be rotated too much. Poison and umbral mist reworked to look better after seeing it pixelated on some streams. Dart fan optimized. Steps VFX now display when off screen instead of being frozen yet still calculated. A light reaper jump attack needed another pass to make it more spectacular. Cleric's weapon now doesn't have skinning issues. Crossbowmen now have a more noticeable 
and per durable arrow trails to increase visibility and directionality. Visuals Lower LUD 2 and LUD 3 cloth was missing on the effigy of Scorn. Several armor sets, including a maximum armor seen pierce about and condemned chest, have been adjusted to address minor clipping issues that occurred when using the extreme character sizes strong and thin. A few fire decals in lower Carith have undergone further optimization and visual enhancement, fixing an issue where a bush was clipping through a wall in a manse of Harold Brothers. Camera vibrations and some elevators have been adjusted to reduce exaggerated camera shakes. Fixed a sole flayable spirit that was hard to hit due to the art surrounding it. The level of design settings of the Strider have been updated to address an issue where the jewelry would behave unexpectedly when transitioning from LOD1 to LOD0. This update should result in a smoother and more visual consistent experience with the Strider character in the game. Fixed a torn skirt by resetting the bones to their reference poles. This was discovered while cleaning her ABP for optimization. Fix the grand artifacts in the Forsaken Fen. Okay, so onto Xbox Series X and S optimization. Multiple performance improvements on Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S UI. Fix the boss's health bar to be better centered on screen. Onto the PS5 optimization. Multiple performance improvements for PS5. Visuals. Fixed a nanite mesh on uh, the 3D gallery background that had a glowing light and there we have it guys it's probably one of the biggest patches i have covered in history i mean it's quite big i'm not gonna lie i think it was about two gigawatts on xbox something like that but hey ho guys you should have this now if you've logged in it should be waiting for you but hey get it downloaded and get it done but there we have it tell me your thoughts on this down below let me know guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys I will see you on that next one.